He loves me. He loves me not. He loves me. He loves me not. Aw, that's the twelfth one. Girl, what are you... I don't see you with the flower. <laughs> Is that how many licks <laughs> it takes to get to the center? <laughs> no, you can't give up, Lauren. Just one more try. Keep practicing. You'll make him so happy. Excuse me, but I can't help but feel a bit sorry for all the flowers you've gone through. Though you've gone through so many that they've turned invisible. <laughs> like, I can't even freaking see them. Oh my god. Hello everyone, this is Boricua Binks and welcome back to Let's Play Ace Attorney Investigations, Miles Edgeworth. We are in the third case, the Kidnap Turnabout. Well, let's save and continue on. All right, March 13th, 2.34 p.m., Wild Wild West area. We're back. Oh, looks like we got the boot again. With Lance safe, the focus of the investigation will shift solely onto the murder. You mean the infighting between the kidnappers? Yes, and also the identity of the remaining kidnapper. Miles, my boy! Tell me it's true! Tell me that you've really found my boy! Yes, Mr. Amano. We found him earlier in the stadium. Then, my little Lance is unhurt? He's not exactly the picture of perfect health, but his life is not in danger. He's being questioned right now by Agent Lang. Poor Lance! It must have been so horrible for him! Locked up like a... <laughs> Sob! Oh boy. Well, I guess we're gonna have to uh, talk to these people. Miles, my boy. I can't thank you enough. It was nothing. Seriously, I didn't find him. He happened to escape on his own. I'm still in shock of what happened to Oliver. But uh, I have to say, I'm relieved that Lance is alright. Oh, that's right. I mustn't forget to pass this on to Lance as soon as the police are finished with him. What's that? A letter? Ah, the way Lance is being chased after the woman reminds me of someone I know. I almost can't believe you received yet another love letter, you know. Here, take a look for yourself. Isn't this a breach of confidentiality? I don't give a fuck. Look how rich I am. What's that, <laughs> that saying from, uh, what is it, the, that freaking... Is it Team Four Star? No, um... Little Karibo? Whoever! The one who's like, Screw the rules, I have money! <laughs> That's what this old man is. Oh my god. My dear Lance Amano, may I come see you again? Your beloved Viola. Tender Lender Loan Company. Hey! Aw, so she took over after what happened in the third, uh, is it the third or fourth case? Third case, I think, of that game, um, Trials and Tribulations. Yay, Viola! I like you even though you're creepy. <laughs> She's still up to her old ways. It's a very simple love letter. Would Edgeworth even know about them? Because I don't think, he, yeah, he wasn't around at that part of the game. Oh? Hey, let me see! Hmm, that's really weird. The whole, uh, ink splotches and the way it's written just feels a little... freaky? I don't know. It's from a loan company, Tender Lender. Looks more like a collection bill to me. And a threat to his life. <laughs> Love letter. Edgeworth, you're a little, uh, oblivious there, aren't you, buddy? <laughs> Is there something we could present to him? Um, anything about Oliver, maybe? Maybe about Oliver? Oliver. 
Ugh, you served me well for such a long time. What am I going to do without him? I'm afraid my money will continue to be dampened by my tears in the long nights ahead. Just like, I think there's a, a gif or gif of it. Of someone, oh yeah, in um, Zombieland, he was using dollar money, like hundred dollar bills to dry his tears. <laughs> like, damn. <laughs> Must be nice to be rich, but at the same time, that's dirty, man. That's real dirty. That's sucio. <laughs> As we would say in Spanish. Okay. Nothing? This was found on the body of your butler. Oh. But what strikes me as odd is the name engraved on the back. Colin Devore. Oh, uh, Colin Devorea? Uh, Veldor Dallin? He's so sad that he's got it all mixed up in his mind. I understand, but that last one wasn't even close. <laughs> okay. I don't think there's anything else then. Um... Hmm. All right. Let's talk to this <laughs> this thirsty girl. What's up, Lauren? He loves me. He loves me not. He loves me. He loves me not. Aw, that's the twelfth one. Girl, what are you? I don't see you with the flower. <laughs> Is that how many licks <laughs> it takes to get to the center? <laughs> No, you can't give up, Lauren. Just one more try. Keep practicing. You'll make him so happy. Excuse me, but I can't help but feel a bit sorry for all the flowers you've gone through. Though you've gone through so many that they've turned invisible. <laughs> like, I can't even freaking see them. Oh my god. I suppose if they were me, then I wouldn't mind being plucked. <laughs> Blush. I believe you said that you are Lance's girlfriend when we first met, correct? Yes, I am, but I mean, it's kind of an open relationship, so if you want to get in on it, just let me know. Oh, it, it's not like we both think of each other as lovers. We haven't gotten that far yet, remember? But he did give me this ring to practice, so I guess we're not just friends either. <laughs> I mean, because this isn't just any ordinary ring. You see, it's a euphemism for- Okay, I'm going to stop you right there. My viewers already have heard enough. They do not need to know anymore. I mean, look, she just- <laughs> Game, I see you, game. Come on now. Come on now. I know I'm being a pervert by twisting and joking about these things, but the game- I feel like they did it on purpose, you know? The way she paused and licked, and then she continued. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. No. I'm not imagining this. I am not crazy, okay? I see you, developers. <laughs> giving this to kids to play. <laughs> it tastes so sweet when you lick it. Ugh, oh, and I just have to say it in this voice, okay. in character and I can't. Oh, it's so wonderful. You mean to tell me that he gave you a lollipop ring? I am so disturbed. So which is it? Have you guys not decided if you're going out or is it just one-sided? Decided? Shouldn't the parties involved naturally just know? Edgeworth, this is why you and Phoenix have been in limbo forever. You guys have to actually talk about your relationship, okay? My father used to work for Mr. Amano. And so, Lance and I grew up together. <gasps> Gasp! I said it out loud. Our tragic backstory begins. We don't see how that's anything to be embarrassed about. And it's not tragic at all since Lance is alive. So your father was an employee of the Yamono Group. What did he do? I heard his job was to fly around the world. 
on Pegasus. P Pegasus? Um, what? Oh, uh, Pegasus was the name of the airplane. The airplane belonged to the company. Y you had me there for a second. I thought actual Pegasi exist. <laughs> is, is it Pegasi? For, like, multiple Pegasus Pegasuses. <laughs> but now, it's all changed. My father, he isn't around anymore. Oh, I see. About ten years ago, he rode in Pegasus off to somewhere and never returned. Riding Pegasus to whereabouts unknown. Sounds like the stuff legends are made of. It's been so long. I don't think I'd recognize him if we were ever to meet again. I'm so sorry, Lauren. But I won't give in to the sadness. I have to live. Yes, Lauren, live! Okay. About this incident. Incident? But isn't the kidnapping already over and dealt with? I've been here the whole time, so I'm afraid I don't know much about any other incident. How did you come to know that Lance had been kidnapped? Oh, um, that's because of my woman's intuition. <laughs> that was a very awkwardly long pause right there. You based everything on that? I know everything when it comes to my Lance. I watch him sleep every night. You share a room together? No, I break into his house and watch him sleep. It's really strange, but I love him, so it really must be destiny. <laughs> Blush. Ugh, she started fantasizing again. She's kind of annoying, Mr. Edgeworth. So, what are you going to do now, Mr. Edgeworth? You already established that there's a good chance that the killer is the other kidnapper. It is my duty to figure out who this other person is. I believe there is one location that might hold a clue or two. Um... Well, yeah, we haven't been here. The kidnapper's hideout. The obvious location is the kidnapper's hideout. But we're still not allowed in, remember? Agent Lang and his men should be done with this area. In that case, there is no harm in asking that officer over there to let us in. Okay, they had to show him to us. Let me in. Let me in. What do you have to report? Sir, nothing unusual or out of the ordinary, sir. Where have I heard such redundancy before? Hmm, is it possible for you to let us take a look around inside? Sir, Roger, sure. Uh, sure? <laughs> sir. <laughs> sure, sir. That was surprisingly hassle-free. Are you certain? Didn't Agent Lang order you not to allow me in? Sir, that's true, sir, but... Detective Gumshoe asked me personally to let you in, sir. Hey, somebody actually listens to Gumshoe. Good for you, man. And I couldn't refuse a request from him. He's like my big brother, sir. Wow, looks like Detective Gumshoe has a following. Other than Binks and Coco, who are big fans of him. Furthermore, I was asked to give this document to you, sir. What is this? Oh. The man in this picture. Isn't this Mr. Oliver Deacon? Oh. Interesting information we got. Height, weight, and the fact that his name now matches the same one on the pendant. And, uh... Hmm, his dominant is right hand. Whereabouts unknown after his escape from Penny Dent. Penny Dent. Haha, <laughs> Pendant, I get it. Prison. Stole a gun from a guard during his escape. We thought he might head for where his wife and sole daughter are, but despite 
surveillance yet to show up, I think. Yeah, despite our surveillance. <clears throat> but the name here says Colin Devore. That's the same name as the one in the back of the pendant. It appears that Colin Devore was his real name. What's this? He was convicted in a case ten years ago and sent to prison. What? Then what was he doing here? Apparently, he broke out of jail and then just vanished. He must have become Oliver Deakin to cover up the fact that he was an escaped felon. Interesting. Now I'm not sure what's going on anymore. Is there some sort of link between the victim's past and his current case? These police documents are rather detailed. I should take the time to give them a thorough read eventually. It's fine. Let's focus on one thing at a time, starting with the kidnapper's hideout. Yeah, I agree. We should investigate first, think later. More than thinking things through, I think you should try remembering things first. Now then, if you could please unlock the door, officer. He was locked up until a little while ago, but since then the door has been wide open, sir. I'm not sure I follow what it is you're saying. Care to explain in a bit more detail? Sir, the door was locked down tight when they went to check out the room. So they got about ten officers to help out and break the door down, sir. I see. I guess that means I get Agent Lang's leftovers. Well, let's see what we find. Hopefully he ate something good. Alright, March 13, 2.55 p.m. Kidnappers hideout. So, this is where the kidnappers planned their foul deed. Well, you were tied up for a while in the room next door. <laughs> Kay, please, must you bring that up again? Now then, down to business. There might still be some clues left in this room. Let's try to find out what we can of the other kidnapper's identity. Alright, we got a lot to look at in here. First things first, let's look at the other room. Beyond this door. It's where the kidnappers help you after getting the jump on you. Must you keep reminding me? But it's the room where I got to see your awesome yell face! <laughs> Kay, please. You do not need to remind me of that mortifying moment either. <laughs> oh, Edward, you will never escape your past. Alright, what's this? What have we here? Looks like a sword. A broken sword. Strange. Why would it be broken like that? Okay, cleanly in half. Swords don't usually break on their own. That's not a real sword, though. That's true. Alright, then let's think about it in this way. Maybe it broke when someone was trying to use it for or on something. Ah. Hypotheticals aren't going to get us anywhere. Perhaps we should think more on this later. AKA, come back to this. Let's look at this door. This door is thoroughly broken thanks to the police who forced it open. Oh. Zoom in. Alright. So let's look at that. That doorknob handle thingy is looking pretty beat up. I suppose that's what happens when ten officers break their way in with brute force. Hey, that's odd. The lock on this is completely fine. Look, not a single dent. But how is that possible after what that officer told us? Yeah, if the lock had been in use when the door was busted down... Then the lock itself should be completely wrecked. So the lock on the door leading to the outside is undamaged. How can that be? Ah. 
All right. Uh, we already looked at this, but it's like a sword. Broken sword. Strange. Why would it be broken like that? Swords don't usually break on their own. Okay, it's the same. Okay, let's look at that. The panel that hid the entrance to the underground is propped up and wide open. Be careful of where you step, Kay. I only fell into that other opening once, you know. Once is enough. Okay. Now let's do some logic. The sword. And the door. And... Whoosh! It's a bit strange that the police had to force their way into an unlocked room. One look at the pristine door lock and anyone can see that it was not in use at the time. But the policeman outside said that it took ten men to get it open. Hmm, a door that was locked tight despite it not being not locked at all. I sense a contradiction. <laughs> It's like, Mr. Edgeworth, what is it with you in contradictions? Leave me alone, Kay. They're my bread and butter. They're everything to me. Everything. It can only be because of this. Oh, you mean... Yes, it was used to jam the door. Here, take a look at the door handle. Do you see how the handle is completely destroyed? So that's how the sword broke. Okay. So now we can go look at these. Unused folding chairs lean against the wall in their folded state. Wow, whoever lined these up did it perfectly. They're not even a single hair off. I feel bad using these because it'd be like stealing the perfection away. Even though I am a thief. I suspect it's more like you wouldn't want to be the one to put them away. <laughs> okay, broken mirror. Watch out, Mr. Edgeworth! It's a broken mirror. It probably came from the haunted house. Why is this here? Are they planning to repair it? Hmm. The Badger Rally? The sign advertising the photo rally, something I have absolutely no interest in. Yeah, but I do. And I'm going to get my hands on the rest of the Badger family. You'll see. She definitely brings a decidedly different atmosphere to a criminal investigation. Always jumping up and flashing me with her skirt. <laughs> okay. Uh, moving on. Uh, every nook and cranny. Well, let's look at the coffee. Cheap styrofoam cups. Huh. Looks like only three cups were used. Okay, and the chairs. Building chairs, and by the looks of it, they were probably used by the kidnappers. Huh. There are three chairs set around the table. Huh. <laughs> this is a, a case of can you add? Three plus three. <laughs> Equals one. No. And... Whoosh! The common denominator between the cups and folding chairs is the number three. One, two, three! Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Do y'all know what I'm referencing? Oh, man. The Count. Ah, oh, man. Sesame Street, yo. <laughs> Back in the day. Speaking of which... The number of missing costumes is also three. Wait, but I thought there were only two kidnappers. Indeed, something isn't adding up. Literally. Is it possible there is a third kidnapper that Lance didn't see? I mean, I don't know, man. It's possible, right? It's possible. Anything's possible. Even though he says he was with them. In here so it's like huh, what was the third person doing then all that time 
I thought that we might uncover the true identity of the kidnappers. But instead, we've only uncovered more questions that need to be answered. Oh my god! <laughs> the paralysis demon! <laughs> god, I wish I could do some cool editing right there. <sighs> Just hearing the psycho music. <laughs> well, we're going to leave this episode right here before Edward turns around and sees his nightmare. <laughs> so, until next time, have a nice day. Bye-bye! Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And also make sure to ring the bell for notifications for new episodes. You can follow me on Twitch where I stream and also follow me on Twitter for updates. Until next time, have a nice day. Adios!